for plywood from oil palm trunks. Yeah, please share Dr. your Lu, it's mm. yeah, perfect. We see it. So on okay. the full screen. So yes. the stage is yours. Um, thank you very much, uh, Professor Kaja, for the introduction. So uh, good evening uh, to all of you here. Uh, as promised uh, last uh, workshop, I would like to share some uh, experience uh, regarding to the 15 years uh, journey on the uh, OPT plywood uh, manufacturing in Malaysia. Okay, uh, please allow me to begin my presentation in a short introduction about uh, my organization uh, and our center uh, in Malaysia. Uh, actually, uh, Malaysia Timber Industry Board uh, was established in the uh, 1st of June uh, 1973, uh, about 40 years old, under at, uh, Malaysia at uh, 100, uh, 105. So actually, uh, NTIB is a federal regulatory body under uh, Ministry of uh, Foundation Industry and Commodity as a leading agency in development of a Malaysia Timber Industry. And also, uh, FIDEC, uh, Fiber and Bicom Center is one of the division under uh, MTIB, uh, providing the wood and biocomposite uh, processing facility and also uh, all kind of the testing services uh, for the industry and also the institution. Okay. Um, so in my presentation today, uh, the outline um, for the presentation today, I will highlight on the overview of the timber industry in Malaysia about the oil palm trunk and also the plywood uh, manufacture. Uh, the quality and also the production uh, enhancement, then uh, by uh, pump plywood for the furniture making and also the market uh, potential and last uh, uh, is a conclusion. So, um, yeah. I think the slide not moving. Uh, okay, uh, timber industry is a third uh, larger contributor after oil palm and rubber in commodity sector with the export value uh, achieved uh, achieve, uh, 22 billion in year uh, 2020. I think back to the slide, uh, I need to, okay. Uh, in um, 2020 is about uh, 22 billion uh, we with the export value. So our timber product mainly export to USA, Japan, China, and also uh, more than 150 countries uh, every year. Then uh, the investment uh, again uh, is about uh, 759 million uh, liquid measure and also the workforce uh, covered by um, the foreign and also the local about 165,000. Okay. Um, so, okay, timber industry uh, from the survey done by the NTIB. Um, Uh, the survey done by the NDIP, we have uh, we have a uh, 1,900 rupees a meal actively in operation located in home Malaysia, uh, Kawasaba Sabah and Sarawak, and also the peninsula. So the biggest uh, industry is uh, was a uh, furniture, uh, and also followed by the sawmill and also the plywood uh, plywood mill. Okay. So NDIB done some uh, estimation um, and also forecast the timber resources up to 2035. So the timber resources are mainly from the natural forest and also the forest plantation with a local, uh, with the total around 23 to 29 million meter cubic per year. But uh, the, tim the timber demand is around 24 to 30 million uh, meter cubic per year. Uh, with an estimation of a 10% increment in the future. So um, that uh, indicate that uh, average of uh, 54,000 meter cubic shortage of the raw material to achieve our timber requirement. Uh, and NDIB is, uh, is actively uh, looking for the alternative raw material to fulfill the industry demand. So um, as we know that uh, from the previous uh, presentation, oil palm is uh, in rapid growth in Malaysia. So we can um, see that uh, from the 1.7 um, million hectare in uh, 1990 uh, up to up to 5, 5 million, uh, 5.7 uh, million in, uh, in uh, 2020. So um, 
OPT is an estimate uh, 30 million trees or 22 million cubic meter available uh, on the on the replanting uh, exercise. So due to this uh, replanting uh, of the supply of timber, OPT has uh, become the very important uh, resources uh, for the for the country and also is uh, suitable to to make the plywood from timber and also the particle board. So, um, uh, next, uh, I will talk about the, um, the pro and con of the oil palm wood. Uh, actually, uh, they, ha they have the advantage and also the dis disadvantage of using this uh, oil palm wood for the timber product. Uh, for the prawn, uh, OPT actually is a knot, not, it's a very straight uh, fiber direction. Then um, excellent values in many properties, uh, some like the school withdrawal, and also um, it's uh, available in large quantity, as I mentioned before. And also um, oil palm wood also uh, occur of some of the problem. Uh, and also the, the disadvantage uh, using this oil palm wood, um, such as a rough surface, and also it's quite difficult uh, on the finishing. Uh, soft tissue and easy to break uh, and also um, during the cutting and also uh, uh, by CNC. So dimensional instability, uh, easy to deform and also uh, easy to absorb water. And also uh, oil palm wood also various uh, intensity, but uh, this density can be uh, soft uh, by some uh, uh, treatment. And also, uh, I think the density, the various of density is a pro for the uh, oil palm wood to produce a different type of uh, application, different type of the product. Uh, due to the high sugar content, it is attacked by the fungi and also the, uh, the insect. Okay, uh, next, uh, we'll talk about the, uh, the production of OPT plywood. Uh, actually, it's quite similar uh, with a normal plywood production. So the process is the same from a uh, lock cutting, uh, peeling, drying, and also hot pressing with some modification and also a uh, process improvement that uh, I will talk uh, later. So the common problems uh, normally occur uh, in OPT plywood uh, mills are listed here and some have been mentioned before, like density variation, rough surface, high uh, moisture content, uh, which uh, require long uh, drying time, uh, and even veneer thinness due to soft tissue, parikhyma, and also the low uh, mechanical strength, unstable dimension, uh, dimensional, and easy attack by the borer, and also the fung fungi. All these problems can be uh, solved, and also, uh, so we don't worry about this. So, okay, go for the next. Um, so I will uh, talk about this uh, quality and also the, um, the, the process and enhancement and, uh, throughout these uh, 15 years. So we began our study uh, since uh, 2006 uh, when uh, I, was, uh, uh, I was a student and also postgraduate uh, under uh, UPN with uh, Toto Parida at that time. So we began uh, the study uh, to, make, um, to use uh, this uh, OPT to make a uh, vinyl and also the plywood. Okay, um, so I divide to the three uh, parts uh, from here. So we have uh, this uh, um, density distribution of a uh, vineyard, then uh, by the resin treatment to enhance the properties. Then uh, some of the uh, study on the bleed drying process uh, prior to the uh, normal uh, processing, then enhance the plywood manufacturing process and also the quality improvement. Uh, I have um, uh, published uh, this uh, finding, uh, I think in the several uh, years back. So this one is uh, to show that the vineyard density dispersion along the trunk. Uh, this one we, we sampling the, the vineyard is uh, after the drying process. So you can see that uh, the increasing uh, the density is from the bottom and also quite severe from the outer to inner. Then uh, if I look at the density depression on the vinyl uh, ribbon, so you can see that uh, it's quite homogeneous density in top part, uh, but uh, it's a different uh, outer and inner. You can see that the different uh, 
between the middle part and also the bottom part. So you can, you can differentiate uh, outer and also the inner veneer in your production. Okay, um, generally the oil, uh, this one is uh, after uh, we treat uh, with, um, uh, now we, we're using uh, several uh, wearables, uh, like uh, we're using the different uh, group spray rate from 250 gram per meter uh, square up to the 400 uh, gram per meter square. Actually, uh, the group spray rate from the 250 to 400 is uh, not much uh, effect on the properties, but the outer and also the inner veneer uh, will affect uh, more to the uh, MOR and also the MOE. Then the next, um, the next uh, process uh, we do some uh, modification uh, and also the by the resin treatment with a uh, low molecular weight uh, PF resin. Then um, actually the process is uh, quite same uh, with uh, this uh, prior uh, processing. Only that uh, we just uh, treat the veneer uh, by soaking. After that uh, we have to put the veneer, treat the veneer in the oven and dry it. Then then we just apply another glue on the uh, on the treated veneer, then to make uh, the plywood. So this is uh, the the procedure for this uh, enhanced uh, enhanced resin uh, resin uh, procedure. Okay, so I can uh, I would like to share some of the uh, properties uh, in terms of the mechanical after uh, we treat uh, the veneer with a low microwave weight uh, PF resin. So the highest increment in MOR is about 115% was obtained for the, for the outer veneer and the lowest increment was obtained from the inner veneer is about 60%. So, and also outer veneer type gave the highest uh, improvement of uh, 197% uh, in a water uh, metering uh, test under the uh, bond integrity. So the treatment of oil palm, uh, oil palm veneer with a uh, glue was able uh, to improve the strength properties and uh, resulting uh, plywood in uh, respective of type of veneer used. So uh, you use an uh, outer veneer with a treated, gave the higher uh, mechanical strength. And also with uh, for the dimensional stability, also we uh, obtain some of the findings that uh, the veneer treated with a PF uh, able to enhance the properties of dimensional uh, in terms of a thinness rating and also the water absorption is about uh, 80, uh, 80, uh, 68% uh, for the thinness rating and also 49% uh, for the uh, water absorption. Okay, and also we also done some uh, study on the um, the resistance towards uh, the mites and also the white rot fungi. So treatment of uh, oil palm uh, trunk uh, veneer with a uh, low molecular weight uh, resin able to increase the uh, the durability properties against uh, those uh, the mites and also the fungi uh, fungi white rot about sixty two percent, and also the mite is about uh, forty four percent. Okay. Dr. Lo, you have uh, two, three minutes more left, you know. Okay. Uh. Okay, I, I try to uh, pass it out. So uh, for the second uh, phase, uh, we try to improve uh, the resin treatment without additional uh, glue applying on the plywood uh, before we making the plywood without uh, applying the new, uh, new adhesive. So this one is uh, the process. Mm, then uh, one of the... Uh, Prior, we try on the mechanism to prepress uh, the veneer to reduce uh, the drying time. It's about twenty four percent. After we use the the prepress machine, I think the slide not moving. Okay, and also uh, this one is a second phase uh, uh, as Hammond process, and also we use the same uh, resin uh, resin treatment. And also you can find that uh, it's an increase uh, more in uh, mechanical strength. And also we also found the pattern for this uh, process. Uh, 
And also we did uh, some enhancement uh, process uh, in uh, by, uh, plywood uh, manufacturing. So with uh, enhancement on the process and also we, did, uh, we have uh, modified some of the machine during the processing. So this uh, may input uh, may improve the output. It's about uh, sixty percent of the capacity. So we try from six hundred uh, meter cube per month. Now can increase up to one thousand uh, meter cube per month with the uh, enhancement process. Then uh, we also did some uh, study on this uh, log uh, preservation because uh, this one is quite important. Uh, because all the OPT logs uh, after harvest, we need to store it uh, as well to uh, outdoor. So we try uh, using the normal uh, normal uh, material like the uh, pants and also the PF resin, engine oil. So found that the uh, engine oil is uh, quite effective uh, to prevent the fungi and also the, the more uh, growth to the uh, OPT logs before uh, process. Then uh, last, I will talk about this, uh, our trial uh, using this uh, OPT plywood to make uh, furniture. And also we, do, uh, we did uh, some uh, trial in the furniture industry. And uh, then there is uh, some challenges uh, that uh, we are facing uh, using the 100% of OPT without a face and back from the wood uh, veneer. So we're facing the difficulty on the painting, uh, carving, machining, and also uh, easy attack by borders. So uh, finally, we, we, did, we did some uh, development of a high uh, quality, high quality uh, palm plywood and able to commercial uh, this uh, plywood, uh, uh, OPT plywood for furniture. Uh, this kind of the furniture already uh, export to, to other countries uh, like US and also the uh, Japan. Um, some of the uh, furniture. Uh, prototype developed by us and also the local designer. Then you can see that uh, the, the wooden furniture contributing about 10 billion, uh, almost uh, 10 billion uh, every year. And also the plywood uh, contributing to the export value about 2.8 billion retail ratio every year. So there is a big uh, potential to using the this kind of the material to make a uh, furniture. And also we did some calculation, uh, one hectare of uh, OPT that uh, can produce a uh, very, I think it's about 22, uh, 20, uh, 32 uh, meter cubic of palm plywood. And also the selling price is about uh, 1,300, the lower price uh, per meter cubic. Then uh, we can calculate that uh, how many uh, we can, how many income that uh, we can generate from this uh, OPT material. So uh, last uh, but not least, I would like to conclude um, my presentation. Uh, so actually, uh, OPT plywood can be produced same as a tropical plywood with some uh, process enhancement and, uh, and also the modification. So resin treatment was effectively improved the properties. Uh, OPT has uh, become a very important uh, raw material for the furniture industry after our field trial and also the quality improvement. So we hope that uh, this OPT plywood can be, um, can be the main resources uh, in our country for the uh, furniture and also for the uh, construction uh, as a construction material. Okay. So I attached some of the reference here. Uh, if you're interested, then you can uh, find some of the uh, journal and also the, the, the handbook that uh, we published uh, before. And also we managed to develop a uh, two standard uh, under ISO and also measure standard about this uh, pli uh, palm, or palm plywood uh, spe uh, specification. So with that, uh, thank you very much uh, for your attention. Thank you very much, Dr. Lo, for your presentation. Uh, we got one question in the chat and perhaps there will be some more, but we start with the first question. Um, what is the minimum thickness of the veneers 
which are possible to produce and what are the maximum thicknesses because the density has an influence as we yes. found out today. Okay, um, through our experience, um, actually we can peel up to the, um, the maximum thickness is about 9 mm, mm -hmm. the maximum. 9 to 10 mm, mm -hmm. uh, and also the lower ones, you can go to the 3.5 millimeter, mm -hmm. and also depends uh, which part of the OPT. Mm -hmm. yeah. So normally in, a, in the plywood manufacturing, uh, they are using 3.5 up to 4.5 millimeter mm -hmm. of the, uh, the thinness of the veneer. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Are there more questions from the auditorium?